Hey, this is George Kuros with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And just going to kind of riff, share some ideas, some, share some thoughts with you. And first of all, I hope you're well, uh, wherever you are. I know this is a challenging time and I feel that uh, a little bit I've kind of hit a plateau. There's this energy and, ex- and kind of excitement, you know, that goes along with the anxiety of all that's happening. And I think uh, with the change in weather, I think with the amount of time people have spent, you know, under quarantine, uh, people are getting restless and frustrated and I understand that. And so um, I know I I feel like I've had uh, some more down days. Uh, I I feel like I'm not getting used to this. At first it was like, okay, this is the challenge. And so I just want to be open and honest about that because I think it is important to to say that because I think a lot of people right now are (laughs) really struggling with, the ideas of like when are we going to go back and uh and not only that what's it going to look like and so just just some of the things that i've been thinking about um in terms of education in terms of you know just how we're doing so just before i even get into the content before i start sharing ideas just make sure you take time to check in on people and don't wait for um don't wait for people to have issues or to share issues before you check in on them. Uh, do it more than you should. I think you'll never regret it. I think a lot of times um, it, we regret not doing those things. And I don't think there's ever um, an issue with actually checking in more on people. And if they're great, then that's awesome. But you just never know who needs uh, someone to just, you know, hear a voice, you know, someone to listen. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're okay. I just want to share that. Uh, one of the thing I'm going to talk about today is I saw a, a tweet um, from uh, someone I really look up to and someone I really appreciate. Uh, his name is Weston Kischenick, and I, I can not say his last name. And Weston, uh, incredible educator, incredible speaker. I love his stuff. If you have not read um, his his book, uh, bold school it's awesome and he has a, i think a new book coming out called breaking bold and i, th- I think he had written it um he co-authored it with um his wife so he's really incredible educator and has some really great ideas and i, I love his thinking and how he delivers his message and the tweet that i saw of his that actually has been kind of like sitting in my mind and I've been really thinking about it. He wrote this just the past weekend. He said, COVID-19 has proven accountability is not the driving force behind great teaching. We removed state tests, teacher evaluations, and even grades in some cases. Then what happened? Teachers are working harder than ever. And I agree with the the last part, 100%. That I've seen incredible um, ideas coming together, just incredible work. And I know educators are really exhausted and overwhelmed right now. And I think it's not only that they're working insanely hard, but they're working hard doing things they're not used to, right? And it's never, there's never been a time ever in the history of education where educators weren't working their butt off. But I think that sometimes even ourselves, we take it for granted because we're used to parent-teacher interviews, report cards, all of these things after school that we do that go beyond, you know, the, the teaching description. But I think it's it's also the change of routines, the, the, the change of doing different things that's, that's tough. And it's, you know, I, I associate it with, uh, you know, working out when you actually do um, new routine. If you spend the same hour in the gym, it seems like a lot. It seems a lot harder. So I agree with Weston there, and uh, that teachers are working harder than ever. The part where I would challenge a little bit, and I actually find it interesting because I know Weston would, is going to agree with me on this as well, is that <laughs> accountability is not the driving force behind great teaching. I would actually say it is, and I think when we use the term now, Weston's from the United States. I'm from Canada and the term accountability, I think in the United States from my travels is associated to test scores, results, reports. And I agree with Weston 100% that because he lists off the idea of state tests and evaluations and things like that. And he lists off those things. But 
if we're really thinking about accountability, I think count, accountability right now is the driving factor, but it's accountability to what is the really is the key here. And what I have seen is that educators are really accountable to the needs of kids. They're accountable to their colleagues and, and to make sure that they're okay and to make sure they're safe and they're welcome. They're accountable to the things that we as educators grew up wanting to make a difference in. And I think that's really the driving force. And I don't think that, you know, educators are like, oh, you know, because tests, you know, test scores and tests, state tests are going away right now, you know, for the time being. I don't think it's that we have lost that focus on serving kids. I don't think there's ever a time where educators are not focused on serving kids. But I think a lot of times the way that we structure our systems and the way we use terminology in, in education, it actually kind of makes us focus more on the scores than the kids. And I think right now, the accountability, the efforts that are happening right now is because of the accountability to the people. And I, that, and I think Weston would agree with me 100%. I don't know if it's a challenge. I think you know, when he's talking about accountability, he's framing it in the sense of how we talk about accountability um, a lot in the United States, if, you know, because we connect it with, with test scores. And the reason this has really resonated with me, and I, I thought about this tweet, is because for years, I've been really challenging this term data-driven. And I often say that data-driven is the stupidest term in education. And I kind of say it jokingly, but I'm, I also believe that. And I don't think that anyone that uses that terminology hates children. And that's not what, um, what I'm thinking at all. What I think is that what is intended and what is heard are two different things. So when we talk about data driven, it's, you know, using data to, to be able to serve our kids. I think that's how the majority of people hear it or, or, util, or use that word. But I think when we hear the term data driven, a lot of people say it's all about the score. It's all about the score. And when you, when you look at this, I think that the, the shift that is really important for me um, is that I understand, you know, the importance of uh, grades to some level. But I want you to really think about this idea is, do you believe that high academic grades, and I, I'll connect with you know, the majority of people that listen to my podcast are probably educators. Do you believe that high academic grades actually lead to high quality teaching? in a classroom. Like I'm talking, if you're a teacher that had a high academic grades in high school, in university, does that mean you're going to be a good teacher? And the reality of it is I know amazing teachers who were terrible students, right? And I know amazing teachers who were great students, but what I'm pointing out is that it doesn't always equate. It doesn't always equate that academics lead to a certain thing. And we put such an emphasis on scores, but many people don't look at scores to, to decide if this is the best fit for our organization. And many people don't let scores hold them back from achieving really great things. And I think that's something that is really important. And the thing that I really believe is the idea that if you focus on the kid, the scores will be fine. But if you focus on the scores, we often lose the kit. And that's why I always have struggled with this idea of data driven. And what I've talked about for years, and just a, a, a simple switch in terminology, and this is why I really have connected with Weston's tweet and what he had shared, is I have been talking about the idea of learner driven, evidence informed practice. And what I'm seeing right now is because um, state tests have been removed. Uh, in many places, is that educators really have the opportunity to really attend to the needs of their students and to ensure that they are helping them find pathways to success that are meaningful to them. But that means you have to know who are the kids in front of you? What are their strengths? What are their talents? What are their passions? How do you bring that out in them? But when we talk about this idea of data driven, it's sometimes 
we are looking right at a kid and seeing their abilities, seeing their passions and their talents. But then we actually replace that thinking with what a score does. And I, and I know that's never the intention of any educator. And I don't think that's what I wanted to get into education for. And, but I think the terminology kind of forces us to do this. And so really that idea of learner-driven, evidence-informed practice is that we are driven by the people we are served. And, and tap into this. And we use evidence to help us support. And evidence is much more holistic. Yeah, it can be tests, it can be scores and assignments, but it's really, it's really, it's all things. It's, you know, how we interact in hallways. It's, you know, what we see in uh, extracurricular activities. I've said this a million times over. Many of the things that I've shaped who I am and what I do today were not academic courses in my school. There were things like, uh, sports, uh, extracurricular activities like fine arts. Those are things that really shape me. So this idea of learner-driven evidence-informed practice, I think, is something that we have to really tap into. And like, like I say this all the time, data is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. But when we're driven by data, that is when, that's when we lose a lot of people in education because that's not why I got into education. And that's not why I am. And I know that it seems like it is just, you know, insignificant terminology that I'm focusing on. But every time I bring this up to a room full of educators, I tend to get applause for challenging that term of data driven and what it means. And, and like I said earlier, I don't think anyone that uses the terminology doesn't, you know, want the same things. I think what is again intended and what is heard are two different things. And one of the things I just saw today on Twitter, which I thought was really fascinating, um, was an educator doing um, a, a, an idea I shared uh, from my former assistant principal, Cheryl Johnson. It was called Identity Day. And it was really having a day where kids could really focus and share what their passions were with their entire school community. And it really actually was an eye-opening thing for me because I had learned things about students that I had never known because we weren't actually giving them the space to share that within school. And not only was it an incredible day that moment, but what it led to after was also incredible because you would actually have conversations with these students like, oh, like I did not know you were a gymnast. Like, you know, like, hey, maybe, maybe we should actually think about, is there any books that maybe you'd want to read on this topic? And then you, you get kids really excited about what they're learning because you know what their passions and their interests are. And that's what learner-driven practice really means is know these kids in front of you and how do you tap into that to break, you know, to, to, to really bring out the best in everyone we serve, which is, you know, important for me, not only as an educator, but also as, a, as an administrator. It's the same thing that we should do with our staff. Like if we really know who they are and what, they, what their strengths are and, and who they are it really shifts the way that we do things and so that identity day why i bring that up right now the tweet i just shared even in a virtual setting um they're actually uh the, the teacher i just shared was doing a identity day virtually where students were sharing uh passions and interests back to them um through through their their work right now and i thought it was really interesting and like I said, it's going to, it's not only amazing at the moment, it's going to help things come back after. And so why am I even bringing this up? Why am I talking about this right now? And like I said, I don't think any educator, you know, with the intention of when they got an education doesn't believe the things that I'm saying right now. They really, you know, they're there. They, they, they wanted to get an education to help kids to make an impact. And I think that the things that we hear, and I'll give you an example. You, you go to um, an opening day, and I've been to many of them, and you see superintendents talking about um, relationships are so important, you know, how crucial they are. And that's great. I 100% I agree with that. But then what happens is right after, it's like, okay, well, here's the data scores, and like, this is what we got to fix and all this. And it's like, you're, you're losing the stories of the kids. And I think that then it kind of gets people like, okay, if that's all that you're reporting out to people, then that's what we've got to focus on because that's what's going to make us look good or bad. And those stories that we share of our kids really matter. And so why I'm bringing this up is there is going to be a time where we go back 
to school. And there's going to be time where, like, I, I would love to think that governments would say, you know what, these state tests really aren't that important. You know, there's much better ways we can actually see, you know, the impact schools have on our kids that are much more powerful and very, you know, personal to our students. But that would be crazy to think that actually would happen. Maybe it will. I don't know. I doubt it, though. But there, we're going to go back. State tests will be a thing. But what doesn't have to continue is that notion of focusing so much on data. And really, that is in how we communicate with each other. That's in how we communicate with our staff. And really embracing that idea of learner-driven, evidence-informed practice really makes us reminds us why we became educators in the first place. And, and like I said, I think that many educators are re-energized because some of the things that we focus on are taken off the plate. And so there, some of the conversations we're having at schools are more about kids right now. And they always should start with kids. They should always start with how do we serve these kids? How do we know who they are and, and really build on um, those strengths, those passions, those talents as I keep saying over and over again. So continue to actually have that learner driven focus. But when we go back, really focus on what our kids can do, what they bring to our school and how do we get them into a space where not only do they feel valued, but they know that we create, we create spaces for them in our schools that their contributions are so necessary to the work that we do every day in our school, they know that if missing a day, it would actually be detrimental to all of us because they are so needed in our classrooms. And so I just wanted to share some ideas on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. And really from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna say thank you to every educator out there and all you do for kids. It's, I've just been really inspired by all the stuff that I've been seeing. It's really incredible. So thank you and Weston, thank you for the, the prompt. I know that um, you're, you're going to back me up on all of this stuff because I know that we, we believe it's all about kids and how we can help them and the, 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 the adults that serve them as well. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.